with quite a few changes of club in the summer, a number of players were particularly keen to get off to a good start in front of their new supporters. How Adi Akinbai would have liked to mark his debut for Leicester with a goal. First he curled one just wide, then David James pulled off a fine save to deny the summer signing from Wolves. Another keen to impress was David Ginola. His 30-yard shot forced Tim Flowers into action. And Dion Dublin might have netted from a Ginola corner had Steve Stone not blocked his teammate's effort. Leicester keeper Flowers got a good sight of Lee Hendry's shot as Villa pressed forward in search of a goal. Now, David Ginola never looked too happy when substituted by George Graham last season, but John Gregory replaced him on the hour with Darius Vassell and his cross nearly provided Dion Dublin with a late winner. 34 seasons in the top flight for Coventry and Borough one of the big spenders this summer. But the Sky Blues are renowned for great starts and Brian D nearly capitalised on Yusef Chippo's mistake before Colin Hendry headed off the line. Borough had three new signings in their starting 11 and two were involved in their opening goal. Alan Boxic was the provider, and Joseph Desiree Job, the £3 million summer signing from Lens, the finisher. Boxic then had a goal disallowed before Coventry began to rally. John Eustace is one of Coventry's brightest youngsters, typical of the players the club's trying to groom, and the 20-year-old netted the equaliser five minutes before half-time. But it was a defender who proved one of Borough's most potent weapons. Gary Pallister's quick free kick caught Coventry's defenders napping, and Boxic stole in, lifting the rebound over the frustrated Magnus Hedman. The Croatian side from Lazio looked menacing at every turn, and after Pallister's surging run, Brian Robson's new hot shot showed he's got touch and finesse and could terrorise Premiership defences this season. At 3-1, the game was effectively over, but there was still one more twist. David Thompson's foul on Christian Caronver, a blatant yellow card. Thompson along with Craig Bellamy, the two new faces in the Coventry side. But just four minutes later, when this tackle was made on Paul Ince, referee Barry Knight thought it worthy of a second yellow. Despite appeals from Ince, Thompson had to go, but Borough's new boys had got them off to a fly. Coventry 1, Middlesbrough 3. Darren Bohr and Boxix have been about, they've played at the highest level, um, you know, and they know what it's all about. Um, Joseph Job's a little bit different because he's uh, new to the Premiership and, uh, you know, he's only a young lad learning the game still. But uh, I thought the three of them fitted into the, the team pattern in the side really well. The passing and movement was excellent and, uh, you know, the teammates, I think, appreciated that as well. But I, I thought it was a very good all-round uh, team performance rather than picking out any individuals. We'll try and win the next two games, then after that we've got a break, but that break should allow us to bed the, the new players who have not had a chance, because really, that's David's first game with us, and it's, it's Craig's first game with us, so um, it'll allow him to get into the, the swing of things with us. Southampton manager Glenn Hoddle certainly couldn't complain about the number of chances created by his side, and most of them fell to Hassan Kashlul. The Moroccan missed some and scored from others. A quarter of an hour played, Kevin Davis with the inviting cross and 1-0 to the Saints. Southampton's second came from the right wing as well. Matthew Oakley, Uwe Rosler and Marion Pahars all took a touch, but Cashlou again provided the finish. After losing ten times at Pride Park last season, Derby needed to reassure their supporters there would be no repeat. Branko Strupar's stupendous free kick gave them hope. Jim Smith brought on the pacey Dion Burton for the second half, and the move soon paid off when Stefano Iranio's cross found the Jamaican international at the far post. Derby were level at two all, but there were still some nervous moments for the home fans. Chris Marsden's cross went begging, and Cash Lull wasted another chance to seal a win for the Saints three minutes into injury time, though some credit is due to Mark Poon in the Derby goal. In the dressing room, we're, we're, uh, we're delighted with the performance, but we're not really happy that we're only coming away with one point. As professionals, we did enough today. I mean, there's, games, there's days when you're not going to play well. 
and uh, they're normally the days when you get beat. So when you do play well and you go 2-0 up, um, as a manager, that's a little bit worrying. So we'll, we'll take note of how we played, sure, but I think there's a lot of things that we can improve on. Oh, at the end of the day, I mean, 2-0, you th and you could see, you know, after, uh, particularly experiencing the first half of last season, where once we were 2 down, it, anything could have happened. We fought back very hard and, and got the, the draw, which, so, you know, trying to take the positives out of it, there's a lot of work to do, but uh, we did fight back, and that's the most important factor of the game. Well, this EPL season is off to a bang, but if you thought we were done, think again. Another big match awaits us. The champ Chester, where these two met up on Sunday. The defending champions taking the pitch for the first time this season. And Newcastle, they took the brown ale symbol off their shirts. They're now sponsored by NTL, a cable company. Isn't it all about the beer? Well, Bobby Rapson hoping his team is all about a 3-0 win like the last time they met up. Off the corner, the ball is served in by David Beckham. Yapstam rises to the occasion, but he's denied by Shea Given there. 20th minute now. We'll try it again from the other side. Ball served into the box. Ronnie Janssen will finish this one off. Ronnie Janssen. That's right. The Red Devils have lots of weapons, and Janssen was surfing the net after this one. 1-0, one Man United. Roy Keane now plays a great through ball to Paul Scholes. He spots Ryan Giggs all alone at the back post. Giggs goes postal. He came up just inches short of making it 2-0, but no, sir. The woodwork stopped him. Ten minutes before halftime, Andy Cole lays it off for Roy Keane. He blasts one just wide of the diving Shea given. Keane wants a corner, but no, it remained 1-0 Man U. Now to the second half. Andy Cole bringing the ball across the middle, plays it to David Beckham. He forced Shea given to make another great save, but given was able to deny Beckham on that one. Then after Man United tries to clear it here, Rob Lee finds it right at his feet. But Fabian Bartes finally got into the action. Bartes, the new man in goal for Man U, denied that one. Minute 69, Andy Cole, a nice little one-two with Ryan Giggs, and Cole is on line. 2-0 after that. Cole says, uh, how you like me now? If, uh, you like Man U, you do like it. Cole now has 10 goals in 10 games against his former club. Bartes and Beckham celebrate a 2-0 victory. So Man United.